Hey YouTube, my name is Rob. I'm a data scientist and I make videos about machine learning, coding in Python, and all things data science. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Notebooks are an essential tool for any data scientist coding in Python. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use Jupyter Notebooks on your local machine, also some cloud environments that provide Jupyter Notebooks. And then finally, I'm gonna show you some of the keyboard commands and shortcuts that I use every day and it really speeds up my workflow when working in Jupyter Notebooks. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so before we actually get into Jupyter Notebooks, we need to appreciate why they're helpful. And before we do that, I wanna show you something in the terminal. So you may already know this, but if you're coding in Python, you actually can type in Python into any terminal on your computer. I'm running Linux here, but if you're on a Mac or in PowerShell on a Windows machine, if you have Python installed and type in Python in the terminal, you'll be taken into the Python shell. Now this is where all the magic happens. You can print, hello viewers, and it'll print. You can add numbers, five plus five, and it adds. It's Python, but the shell isn't a great way to actually do anything more than type in one line of code line by line, of course. So we can exit out of this and I can show you how you would write a script. A script is just a file that you would um, run Python on. So let's edit. I have this test script that I've created. All it has in it is print hello viewers. And I can even show you here. This is just in the a text editor on terminal, but you can see here, this is just a file that says hello viewers in the, the file. And if I run Python on this test script, it'll say hello viewers. So this is great because you can run longer scripts that you've written and they can get more complicated. You could add in modules and import things and they can get more and more fancy. But we're here to talk about Jupyter Notebooks. Why is Jupyter Notebooks imp uh, helpful or important? Well, before learning about Jupyter Notebooks, we need to learn about one more thing and that's IPython. That's what Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Lab is built off of. IPython is similar to Python, but it has a little bit more functionality. So if we type in print, hello viewers again you can see that it's already colored it um, will do a little bit of auto completing here so if i do hello viewers i can also do import pan if i do that and hit tab i can see the pandas auto completes as pd and then pd read csv if i do that i can actually see the files in this folder and some other autocomplete by hitting tab. So this is really handy about IPython. It was developed um, as an extension onto Python to make it more interactive. And Jupyter Notebooks were built off of that. And we're gonna show you now how to get into Jupyter Notebooks. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you don't have Jupyter Notebooks on your local machine, you can just pip install Jupyter Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab is the latest version of Jupyter Notebooks and it will install it for you. I actually already have it installed so it's not that um, exciting. Okay, so after you have Jupyter Notebooks installed, you'll be able to run it by just typing in Jupyter Notebook. And what does this do? Well, it's gonna open immediately another window, but one thing I want you to notice here is it started a Jupyter server here on your local machine. It's on a port 888, that's the default port. All you really need to know is that something's running on your computer and now you can access it with your web browser. So if we, uh, it'll either automatically open it up or if you click on this link, it will open up your web browser. And if you notice here, the website localhost on port 8888, that's where Jupyter Notebook is being hosted on my machine. And in Jupyter Notebooks, you can actually now see the files in this folder. I have my test script that I showed you before. So this says, hello viewers. And then I also have, can open that up. I can edit it. 
I could comment this out. It's a simple text editor, but you can also edit Jupyter Notebook files. Those will have the extension IPYNB. When it loads up, it looks like this, and it's an environment where you can save your file, uh, copy things, but the main thing that we're gonna focus on is the fact that Jupyter Notebooks are all based around these cells. And you can add cells by hitting this plus button, or you can cut them or remove them with the little scissors. You can copy a cell and you can paste the copy. But the cell types are of, cells are in two main types. You have a markdown type. This is uh, basically plain text that you're gonna wanna write and have alongside your code. So let's just type in here, and this is markdown. So if I do a hashtag, I can make a title and I'm gonna say, um, example, or, sorry, Jupyter Notebook example. And below this, I can write a subtitle. And with two hashtags, I can write some text. This is an example notebook. And we can do things like uh, lists. Li this is item one, next is two, and then three. So you can do more than just writing plain text here. You actually write notebook. Uh, sorry, Markdown, and this will be right next to your code cell. So code cell is where now we can actually write Python. And it hasn't launched yet, but as soon as I uh, write hello viewers and run this cell, you can see there is now a one by the hello viewer cell, and we are now running an actual Python kernel environment in the background. So we know that we can write plain text, have it right next to our actual code that we've run. Um, but the other great thing is that we can write code that exports something like an image or a graphic and it'll show it in the notebook and render it. So let's import NumPy and let's import matplotlib and show a plotting example. So this is just an example from the plotting uh, matplotlib website. And we're gonna plot some example uh, data here. And this is great. So we could plot, show the result. We have our code up here. And then we can also now write some text. So we can make a markdown cell right below it. Uh, this plot above is amazing. We've learned 50 things and then you can go on to list all your things. And this notebook file you can now share with people and they can see your thought process and your code run all the way from the start to the end. And that's really the power be behind Jupyter Notebooks. But we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to look at Jupyter Lab, which is the latest version of Jupyter Notebooks and add some additional functionality. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to hit control C to shut this down, this notebook down that we've been running in the background. And instead of typing Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to type in Jupyter Lab. And what comes up here? but a, a different looking environment. Now, one thing I'll mention here is that this theme I have as the dark theme by default, but when you load it up, it'll probably look something like this. And now we have this tab here on the left side that is a little bit more of an advanced way of uh, allowing us to browse through our files that we have. So we still have our test script here and we have our example notebook that we're learning working on before and we can see that we have still our text markdown cells and our code cells but we have a little bit a um, little bit easier way of navigating around with this navigation or file browser tab we also have this running tab this allows us to see 
all the notebooks and the tabs we have open and all the kernels that are running or, or uh, Python instances that are actually running. So not only do I have this notebook open, but we have a Python environment running in the background that's allowing this code to run. If I hit shut down on all, it'll shut down this kernel in the background. And now when I run the first cell of code here, it will have to start up a brand new kernel and you can see it pop up here again. So now if I run print hello viewers, it prints it out. It shows the number one by it to show that cell was run first and then we can run our other code. Now, some things I wanna mention here is the order in which you run your cells in the um, Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab will actually, does not have to be from top to bottom like in normal coding. So this can get confusing at first and it means that you can experiment more by going back and forth between cells. It's one of the real powerful things about Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks, but it also, uh, allows for some bad practices where um, you can make a notebook that doesn't actually run end to end. And it's important to go through once you're saving off your notebook and to make sure it actually can run all the way from the top to the bottom or else you're really going to confuse yourself later. Like let's say I restart this kernel. We're going to hide this and I'm going to put it in this order. So I'm going to run hello viewers. I'm gonna do my imports here, and then I'm going to do my plot third here. If I try to reset this and run this, um, run this from top to bottom, I'm gonna try to print hello viewers, try to do my plotting, but I haven't imported NumPy yet. So it's gonna give me an error. It worked before because I ran it out of order, but it's important to keep it in order when you're actually, um, creating your your final notebooks. Um, some other things to keep to keep in mind about Jupyter Lab is you have this tab that shows you your table of contents. So remember we added a title here and a subtitle. This allows us to quickly jump around if we wanted to make this um, discussion of plot here. Now we see it here in, in our in our table of contents that we can easily jump around. We also have an ex extension tab. So Jupyter Lab allows for a bunch of different extensions to be added. What you could see before was I added this Jupyter Lab solarized dark theme, which I really like, which allows me to go to the settings theme, Jupyter Lab solarized dark theme, and I can actually have my code look in, um, in nice colors that I think is visually pleasing. So there are a bunch of different extensions that you can add. You can um, search for them or you um, like this solarized theme. I just found on this um, GitHub page and I pip installed it in my environment. All I had to do is pip install like this and that then it showed up as an extension that I've added. Um, so a lot of things that you can do in Jupyter Lab that you can't necessarily do in Jupyter Notebooks. And, uh, and it's really great for writing code that you then can save off. Now, some things that I utilize a lot is um, when you want to save your notebook and your code. If you're sending it to someone who does not have Jupyter, you can export it as uh, different file types. You can export it as HTML, which actually renders pretty nice. If you emailed this to someone, they would be able to see the text and the code and the plots all next to each other, which is great. Um, you can also export it. You can also export it as a PDF if you want to, or um, other types, but really HTML usually looks the prettiest in my opinion. And it doesn't actually split up by pages, which is a nice thing. Um, some other things to keep in mind, you can want to save your notebook often to make sure you don't lose what you've been working on. You can go to file, save, or click on save here. 
If you want to test out your notebook running from end to end, you can actually click on this run and restart kernel and run all cells will actually run it from the start to the end. So you'll see that pop up and it'll show you it run it from the start to the end. And then you have some more settings that you can set in here, like how you want your tabs to set up, um, your indentation, uh, key mapping, it's all, you can go into all the details of settings and really make JupyterLab work for you as best as you can. So now I've showed you how to run Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Labs on your local machine, but Jupyter Notebooks have become so popular that you can actually run them in cloud instances. So there are a few different ways that you can run Jupyter in the cloud and some of the most popular ones are Google Colab and Kaggle Notebooks. First, I'm gonna show you Google Colab. So if you go to colab.research.google.com and you have a Google account, you can create a, a notebook pretty simple. The nice thing about running it in the cloud is you don't have to worry about installing Python on your local machine, installing all the packages you might need. The environment's usually set up with a lot of data science packages already loaded. So we're going to go here to Colab and create a new notebook. And the environment looks a little bit different, but there's a lot of similarities. So we're going to call this example notebook. We're going to make a markdown. They call it text here. We're going to move this one up and say Google Colab notebook this works and we can print here hello viewers just like we did before and why don't i go here and actually do the same plot we did before in the notebook Here, this is all running in the cloud. Um, in Google Colab, you can see that the instance that you're given up here has a certain amount of resources. So this has uh, over 12 gigs of RAM on it. It has some CPU usage that you can view here in the top right to see how much you're actually using of the instance as you're running your notebook. Um, we can also, I, I believe we can, we can download this IPy notebook file with the notebook file itself. We can save it directly to GitHub or copy it to a drive. So this is a, a nice and easy way to get started with Jupyter Notebooks in the cloud using Google Colab. Now the last Jupyter Notebook type of environment I want to show you are called Kaggle Notebooks and Kaggle is a free website that actually uses a lot of the same functionality of Google Colab and Jupyter in the background in their notebooks. So I, if you have an account, you can go to this code page and create a new notebook like I just did there. And let's call this example notebook. And very similar to Google Colab, but once we run it, um, example, Kaggle notebook, this is great. Print, test, test, one, two, three. So one of the really nice things about working in the Kaggle environment is you actually have access to all the public data sets they provide, which you can easily link to your notebook and load into um, to run analysis. So if we go into here, in this tab onto the right, I can add data. And there's a bunch of public data sets you can filter by the most votes or the newest ones. Uh, let's just look at some of my data sets. We're gonna add in this Mr. Beast YouTube stats data set that I've created. And I'm gonna import pandas. And it's always saved into the input directory, but we're gonna run this and pull in uh, the data, data frame for stats. I'm using pandas here. If you wanna learn more about pandas, I do have a video 
on some basic introduction to using pandas. But as you can see, I've loaded in the data. I can take his videos and I can plot um, the view count on a plot by the like count of each video. Mr. Beast videos. And here we have it. We've created this plot here and we can add cells below with text analysis here. The nice thing, other nice thing about Kaggle Notebooks is it forces you to, when you save it, run all your code in order from start to end. So although I may go around here and run back and forth exploration, uh, while I may here run cells out of order while I'm exploring the data, when I actually go to save it, it's gonna run it from the top to the end and it'll show as failed if it doesn't render correctly. But if it does render correctly, you actually have a public version of your final notebook and we'll go here and show once it's done. Once it's done running end to end and it doesn't fail, you can actually share this notebook publicly and anyone with the link can go and view it. It's one of the great things about using a notebook as opposed to something on your local machine. One of the last things I wanna leave you with are some of the things that I do to really speed up my use of Jupyter Notebooks, and that's by using keyboard commands that can really speed up your day-to-day -day workflow. So the main things that I wanna talk about are just running cells. So the, the quickest way to run a cell as opposed to clicking on run the cell icon is to actually just do shift enter. And by doing this, I can run these cells very easily, shift enter, and then I can use the arrow keys to move around from cell to cell as I'm running them. Shift enter will actually take you to the next cell after you're done running it. And um, sometimes that's what you want to do. Other times you'd want to run a cell and stay in that cell. And you can do that just by hitting control enter. So now I can run this cell as many times as I want and stay in that cell. Uh, other really important commands are when you're working in a cell and you want to escape out into it and move to a different cell, you just hit the escape key. Now I'm out of that cell and I can move around by using my J and K keys. This lets you not have to take your fingers off of the keyboard when you're moving from cell to cell. So I can move, run this cell, move up here, edit this text, control enter to run that and then move around. So these are command shortcuts should become like second nature to you if you're working in Jupyter Notebooks a lot. Um, Another command that I use all the time is to add and remove cells that you have existing. So A, so once you are escaped, so once you have escaped out of the cell that you're working in, you can quickly add a cell by typing A. That'll add a cell above the cell you are currently on. You can add a cell quickly below the cell that you're on, by typing in B. So A and B will just add cells above and below. You can also quickly delete a cell that you're on by typing DD. So if I'm on this cell above, hello viewers, DD will delete, DD to delete this other cell, escape out, I can move up and down using J and K. And finally, the command that I use a lot that speeds things up is you can change between markdown and code types of cells by simply escaping out and typing M for markdown or Y for code. So you could see here, I can easily above this import numpy, do A to add a cell above it, M to change it to markdown, hit enter to enter the cell and then uh, this is where I import. Control enter, I've entered that cell in and continue on without taking my fingers off the keyboards once. 
So that's my quick introduction to Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebooks, and Cloud Notebooks. I hope it was helpful. If there's any suggestions you have, please add a comment below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And let me know what you'd like to see a video about next. See you guys in the next video. Bye.